So I didn't want to get you guys without any video this week. So I thought of doing just sort of like random video of things that I've either purchased lately that I've got to use and really enjoyed or just things that I have rediscovered again uh, because I've been doing sort of like a clean out of my drawers. I reorganized my lipsticks, my eyeshadows and all of that. So it sort of like helped me to see what I actually have in my drawers and not just, um, you know, pick the usual. Because if you tend to look at what you use, there are a certain like top 10 products that you tend to use over and over and that can sort of like overlook all the other things that you might have and like they aren't necessarily bad they're just that you haven't incorporated them into sort of like the routine if you wish um now i my foundation routine i have a couple of foundations that i'm really really fond of and i tend to stick to those but um then I have others that usually are more, uh, I, I want to say temperamental or uh, sort of like very, very specific. Like if my skin is very, very dry, then I, I have a couple of foundations that really work well when my skin is very, very dry, but my skin doesn't tend to be that dry. So they don't really come into my routine that easily or when my skin is breaking out badly or when it's very oily or irritated or when it's uh, summertime or when it's winter time. So it tends to, I have like a basic staple that I use, for example, the Your Star, um, the Armani Lasting UV Foundation, um, the MAC Moisture Finish, uh, mineralized moisture finish foundation the Laura Mercier mineral powder and a couple more that I really tend to use sorry it annoys me I really tend to use uh, frequently and then I have those less frequent ones that they're just sitting there so anyways during my clean out I if you have been following me on my blog slash website uh, if not then I'll put the link down below and make sure to check because I have been back into posting more stuff there. Um, I've been into slowly incorporating the major anti-aging ingredients into my skincare. I already use HAAs, uh, BHAs and PHAs, which are different types of uh, acids. I also use vitamin C, vitamin E. I also use retinol. I have, I think, hyaluronic acid in something. I'm not sure. Then there are peptides, of course, sunscreen. Um, probably I'm missing something. So I, I did actually a skincare post in my blog where you can see about the major anti-aging ingredients. But anyways, I wanted some peptides and right now I'm not going to buy a cream with peptides or a serum with peptides because I have to finish what I have. And if you didn't know that I'm, I'm actually doing the 365 days of empties, which is basically using up uh, samples, deluxe sizes or full sized products and uh, saving up money and getting to use what you have rather than purchasing right away. So I looked into my drawer and I realized that I had the Peter Thomas Roth Unwrinkle Foundation and this it has SPF 20, it's oil free and basically it has six anti-aging peptides and neuropeptides as well as vitamin A, C and E. It's fragrance free and um, what else could I tell you about it? Uh, it has a lot of peptides and lot of vitamins which is pretty good and I dare to say that from the ingredients list it, they are pretty concentrated so it's not something uh, sorry my mom tried to call me it's not something that's uh, just a tiny bit it's actually more like a serum foundation if that makes any sense anyways the shade that I got is light and it's, it's not really that light. It does oxidize, but uh, it doesn't really bother me 
on the days that I don't really want to wear anything because I'm wearing it more for the peptides that it actually has. So this was a good uh, surprise to find in my drawer because um, I knew I had a Peter Thomas Roth, but I didn't realize that it actually had the peptides that I was interested in to incorporate in my skincare. So that is a cool thing, cool surprise. Uh, something else that I rediscovered again because I've been on a primer kick like sometimes I don't wear primer for many many months or very occasionally but now I've been wearing primers daily but I don't take just um, let's say let me rephrase that I don't use the primers for their priming capability I use them for the skincare so I tend to invest into primers that have skincare incorporated into it. So the one that I've rediscovered lately again is the Dermalogica Clearing Mattifier. And this is really good if you're suffering from breakouts or very oily skin. Now I don't have oily skin at best, I have a combination right now. But I've been using this in the areas that have breakouts. One, because it evens out the surface because it's pure silicone base, it doesn't have water. So basically the salicylic acid, the zinc gluconate, the caffeine and niacinamide are all um, encapsulated in silicone. So it delivers it without the need to have any water in it or any oil. And at the same time, it fills in whatever gaps there might be. Because if you know when you're breaking out, what's hard to conceal is the change in texture in your skin, not necessarily the color. I mean, if you take a full coverage foundation, you can cover up pretty much anything. But if you have bumps, that's what makes it less appealing. So this sort of like takes off the edge of the breakout. It won't obviously cover up all the bumps unless you use some special effects uh, latex or fillers or something like that this will just uh take off the edge and at the same time it will calm the breakout and it is a pimple treatment so sort of like a three or uh, four in one on the same vein uh the one that got me started into using again primers is the Smashbox Photo Finish and this one is the one that has Dermaxil which is actually two peptides or three if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's either two or three of the major peptides and I'm not sure if you can actually get this one. I bought it on the ship and I was checking at their at the Smashbox well, sma <coughs> sorry <laughs> at the Smashbox website and it sort of classified it as uh, sort of um, discontinued so I'm not sure if they're planning on to replacing it if they have replaced it with something else or whatnot but I decided to buy it one because it made my hand look pretty neat and two because it has those peptides and it doesn't like it is a nice step to have like you're having a primer, but at the same time you're having peptides. Now, there is something that's bugging me because I'm not sure if peptides can actually uh, pass through the skin barrier if you're applying it as a primer or a foundation. So I'll have to research into that. But meanwhile, I'm just pretending like they do. And if they do, great. If they don't, then I'll, I'm just applying primer. It doesn't bother me <laughs> anyways. Also, it has SPF 20, which of course, um, in a primer, I mean, you're not gonna get the SPF 20, but probably I'm gonna get something out of it. So it's better than nothing. And considering that we have pretty much no sunlight here, then I think my bases are covered, especially when I'm using this one, which has SPF 20. So when I'm layering them, probably I'm getting SPF 15 or something like that. Um, moving on into something that I found again in my drawer. This used to be my favorite for an entire year. And believe it or not, it was a gift with purchase. And this is the Beaten Up Estee Lauder Trio. And I actually bought these um, four years ago. That's how far... No, I didn't buy this. I went to 
Amsterdam airport because I was flying from here to Madrid to visit my mom and when I was in the airport I had some extra money and I thought hey why not check some stuff and I saw that they had the which oh yeah the Estee Lauder um, one of their serums that came in a green bottle the one that was for the pores anyways I bought that and the Anastasia eyebrow powder duo the one for redheads and something else I believe I'm trying to recall anyways the, it was at least those two things and they had that gift with purchase which came with this lipstick lip liner eyeliner I think a mascara or something like that and anyways I usually don't like the gift with purchase stuff like it's usually I find it mediocre but this I'm not sure if you can tell but I've used it a lot like it's really a lot and actually I was surprised that it was this big because I could expect this to be something sold rather than given away but anyways uh, that's what I'm wearing today uh, I'm only wearing that for um, bronzer contour and highlight and basically this is the bronzer no sorry blush contour and highlight this is the uh, blush that I'm using this is the contour and this is the highlight and I'm gonna tell you the shades so the blush is silky powder is the Estee Lauder signature silky powder blush in 11 nude rose so basically it's like the name it says it's a very nude rose it doesn't have very concrete undertones it's not cool it's not warm maybe it is a somewhat in between a neutral rose it's very like healthy looking it doesn't really it's not a statement color it's not a color hard to blend it's just like normal blush like how your cheeks would flush then the bronzer is the Bronze Goddess Soft Matte Bronzer in 01. I assume it's the lightest shade. And this has tiny specks of uh, shimmer in a, I want to say a rose gold tone. Yeah, it's sort of like a rose gold tone, but like they're very, very imperceptible. Like I would have to shine it through the light to actually see it. But it looks like a dimensional matte to me. That means that it's not chalky matte, but it has some kind of life to it, if that makes sense. And then this highlighter, which for me, it is a bit too dark to use as highlighter. So I actually mix it up with the blush and that's the sheen that you're actually seeing when I turn. I'm not sure if you can tell there in that area. That's the sheen that comes from this when I mix it with the blush or layer it. And this is the Estee Lauder Signature Shimmer Powder in 01 Gold Pearl. Although I'm not sure how they classify this as gold pearl. Because it looks more like a pinkish shimmer to me. But anyways, the trio together is gorgeous and that's what I've been using lately. So yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, something else that I found on the sales, it was minus 70, is the Sensei Cellular Performance Lotion 1. This is supposed to be sort of like a two-step moisturizing process. And you can have sort of like a toner before that, which is what I use. Normally I use a cotton bud with some kind of toner. Normally it's a medicated toner that I use if I use a cotton pad, cotton pad, I'm mixing like the bud with the pad. Like, oh, anyways, uh, I'm not really sure if it's this supposed to do a big difference. Like, have you tried it? Do you like this stuff? I mean, I bought it because it was really cheap and uh, it has it has a pretty strong concentration of niacinamide and silk protein so that's supposed to be good for hyperpigmentation but I don't know so if you know more about it let me know in the comments down below next thing that I've been absolutely loving is the 
Colistar lip gloss and this is the gloss design in shade 21 and it's just a beautiful beautiful co coral color um, how could I say it's sort of like a hot pink uh, a more corally hot pink and it has pink and blue shimmer so I've been loving that especially on top of the uh, yeah the fresh passion lip balm these two together amazing and finally finally Muffy woke up he's roosting there how are we doing baby we're well great finally I got something else on sales and this is the Guerlain Maxi Lash oh it's the Maxi oh see Maxi Lash Seal d'enfer and in the shade 02 violet and that's what I'm wearing today. I'm not sure if you can tell. They really, really, really lengthen the lashes like nothing else. It's very similar to the Armani Eyes to Kill, the original formula. So if you've been liking that one, probably you would like this one a lot. It really is smudge proof. I've worked out with this and nothing smudged underneath. I have the waterproof formula, but it doesn't really compare. It's more clumpier. It doesn't lengthen the lashes as well as this one. And it's just a nightmare to get off. Like even with oil, you will still have some residue left. Anyways, that has been everything. I tend to post every day on my Instagram and every other day on my blog when I can. And oh, don't forget to check in my blog. I have new swatches. If you haven't been aware of that, um, I wanted to say a big thanks to Holly because she swatched some Kat Von D foundation because I was on the verge of ordering some Kat Von D. She offered kindly to swatch them for me. She didn't swatch the lightest, but based on the second to lightest and uh, the description that they're giving, I think that the lightest would still be very dark for me. The shade 44, it's, I would say, hair darker than NC15. So maybe the 42 might be NW14, something like that. So anyways, but you can check the all the swatches in my blog, which again, the, in the description box down below, I'll put everything. And please let me know which have been your favorite products that you've been into in the past two weeks. I would really, really love to know. And overall, just any kind of comment that you wish to leave, let them down below. And I wish that you have a wonderful weekend if we aren't gonna see us, see each other before that. And I wish you a gorgeous evening. Bye-bye.